Hello, I'm Crypto Casey, and in this video, I'm going to teach you about cryptocurrency wallets and show you how to set up hardware wallets to store your cryptocurrency safely and securely offline. There are many different types of cryptocurrencies out there, and each one of them are supported by different types of wallets. Currently, the safest way to store your cryptocurrency is offline using hardware wallets, which are commonly referred to as cold storage. In this video, I'm going to walk you through setting up the most trusted and popular cryptocurrency hardware wallets available at this time. We will cover the Ledger Nano S and Trezor One. Although it is possible to store cryptocurrencies on good old-fashioned USB devices or flash drives, I do not recommend going this route. This is because the devices we will cover in this video were built specifically for storing cryptocurrency in the safest, easiest, and most efficient way possible. Unlike regular USB devices, the hardware wallets we will cover have software that protects the contents of the device, so it prevents anyone from being able to just stick the device into a random computer and access your cryptocurrency. Hardware wallets also protect your funds if the device was ever plugged into a hacked or compromised computer. So what is a cryptocurrency wallet? When we hear the word wallet, we immediately think of the pocket or purse accessories that hold our cash, IDs, credit, and debit cards. However, unlike cash, digital currencies are not stored in a specific location and do not exist in a physical form. Transactions and balances of cryptocurrencies are stored on a blockchain or similar technological foundation. A cryptocurrency wallet has software that stores your private and public keys, interacts with the blockchain, monitors your balance, and allows you to send and receive cryptocurrency. So to send, receive, store, and monitor your cryptocurrency balances, you need to use cryptocurrency wallets. To learn more about blockchain, check out my video explaining what blockchain is and why it was developed by clicking on this link. So how do cryptocurrency wallets work? I'm going to give you a very simplified analogy to help you wrap your head around things. Please note this is not exactly how the technology works. It's just an analogy. A simplified way to understand how cryptocurrency wallets work is to consider how your traditional online banking applications work. Imagine your bank is the blockchain. Your bank account number is the public key. Your crypto wallet is your online banking application. And your online banking application login credentials are your private key. So your bank records and tracks all of the transactions going to and from your bank account, just like a blockchain records and tracks all the transactions going to and from your public key. Using your online banking app, you're able to check the balance of your bank account and send or receive transactions just like a cryptocurrency wallet allows you to check your balances and send or receive crypto. However, in order to log into your online banking account, you need to first type in your username and password, which is like using your private key to access your cryptocurrency wallet. A public key is similar to your bank account number in that if you provide anyone with your bank account number, they can send you funds. Keep in mind that public keys are also commonly known as addresses. However, having your banking account number alone would not allow someone to take funds from your account. This is also how your public key works. People can send you cryptocurrency using your public key, but they cannot take funds using your public key. Giving your online banking app login credentials to someone would allow them to send funds from your bank account to somewhere else. This is similar to a private key. If you give someone your private key, they can access your cryptocurrency and send it somewhere else. Unlike traditional banking, if you give away your private key and your funds go missing, you will not likely be able to recover them. This is why it's so important to keep your private key private. If you would like to learn more about how to secure your cryptocurrency accounts, please check out my video about crypto security by clicking here. Before sending and receiving cryptocurrency, you must first make sure you are sending the same type of currency to a wallet address or public key that supports that particular cryptocurrency. For example, you can only send Bitcoin to Bitcoin addresses, and you can only send Ether 
or receive Ether from other Ether addresses. If you are a beginner and want to learn about setting up accounts and other important information before investing in cryptocurrency, check out my Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Buying Cryptocurrency by clicking on this link. So what are the different types of cryptocurrency wallets? There are many different types of cryptocurrency wallets to choose from, and each of them have their own pros and cons. I will break the wallets down into two categories, hot and cold. A hot wallet stores information online, while a cold wallet stores information offline. Let's go over the different types of hot wallets available. One type of hot wallet is known as a desktop wallet. The software for this type of cryptocurrency wallet is downloaded and installed on your computer. You can access your cryptocurrency wallets using that particular computer. Desktop wallets are usually convenient and easy to use. However, if your computer contracts a virus or is hacked, there's a possibility you could lose your funds. The second type of hot wallet is online on the internet. The software for these wallets are on cloud networks and can be accessed using any computer or cell phone with an internet connection from any location around the world. These types of wallets are similar to addresses on cryptocurrency exchanges. These types of wallets rely on a third party to store your private keys online, which are extremely vulnerable to hackers. Mobile wallets are another type of hot wallet. The software for these types of cryptocurrency wallets is in the form of an app that gets downloaded onto your mobile device. These wallets are more lean and simple to use due to the limited space on mobile devices. Now let's go over cold wallets. Paper wallets are created using software that securely generates a pair of public and private keys that are printed on paper or engraved or copied onto something physical, like a metal plate. Receiving funds with a paper wallet is done by transferring your cryptocurrency to your public key or address listed on the paper wallet. Sending funds requires transferring the cryptocurrency to your software wallet by scanning the QR code on the paper wallet or by manually entering the private key listed on your paper wallet. Paper wallets are secure because they reside offline. However, they can be vulnerable to theft or misplacement. The other type of cold wallet is known as a hardware wallet. Hardware wallets store your private keys on a piece of hardware similar to a USB device or a flash drive. When you are ready to send or receive funds, you simply plug your hardware wallet into a computer or similar device with an internet connection to complete transactions. While your cryptocurrency is stored with a hardware wallet, your funds are safe from hackers and other potential security issues other types of wallets are more likely to experience. Storing your cryptocurrency on a hardware wallet is the safest and most secure way to manage your funds. So let's go through the setup for the Ledger Nano S hardware wallet. But before we get started, there are two important things you need to know about buying a hardware wallet for cryptocurrency. First, only buy hardware wallets from the real manufacturer. Do not buy used hardware wallets and do not buy from other companies or individuals. This is because hackers may buy hardware wallets, tamper with the software, and resell the hacked device to steal your funds. And second, as with all crypto-related activities, make sure you are double and triple checking the URLs you are accessing to buy the hardware wallet. Make sure the address is correct and that it has an SSL, or Secure Sockets layer, which uses the HTTPS protocol instead of the HTTP. There are a ton of phishing scams online that pretend to be real websites you intend to access. If you access a fake website, you may lose your funds or receive a hacked wallet. So now let's look at the Ledger Nano S hardware wallet. First, visit https colon forward slash forward slash ledgerwallet.com. Then double and triple check the URL to ensure it's the correct one or you can safely access the Ledger Wallet website by using the link in this description below. So click on the link in this description below. And on the Ledger Wallet homepage, navigate to the Ledger Nano S product page. Here you can view the price, product details, and choose a quantity. I recommend buying at least two, just in case one goes missing, so you have a backup device and don't have to wait for a new one to ship. Sometimes these cryptocurrency wallets are on back order, 
so you don't want to lose access to your friends for several months while waiting for a new device to reach you. Next, add the items to your cart and proceed through the purchasing process. Note that you can pay for the wallet using Bitcoin, credit card, or PayPal. Once your Ledger Nano S arrives, it's time to set it up. So let's unbox the Ledger Nano S. Here is the box the Ledger Nano S comes in. Open it and you will see the Ledger Nano S device. Inside the box is an envelope with some documents. There's a notice explaining how no anti-tampering sticker is on the box because a built-in cryptographic mechanism checks the integrity of the ledger device each time it's powered on. This is one of the reasons why I don't recommend using a regular USB device as cold storage while it's for cryptocurrencies. Always use a device specifically designed for storing cryptocurrency, like a ledger or Trezor. Also within the envelope are some instructions on getting started and some recovery sheets. Your Ledger Nano S comes with a USB cord that connects your ledger to a computer, as well as a lanyard and some key rings for physical transportation or storage. Okay, now let's set up your new Ledger Nano S. First, you need to download some software to interface with your Ledger Nano S and update your firmware. The Ledger Manager software is a Google Chrome application. This means you'll need to download and install the Google Chrome web browser to proceed. If you already have the Google Chrome browser, you can skip this step. To download Google Chrome, go to https colon forward slash forward slash google.com forward slash chrome. Next, click on the Download Chrome button. Review the terms and services and then click Accept and Install. Once the download is complete, open the file and proceed with the installation. Once Google Chrome is installed, open the Chrome browser and type into the URL bar https colon forward slash forward slash start dot ledgerwallet dot com and press enter. You will see a welcome screen and some instructions to select your ledger device to begin. Click on the Ledger Nano S icon. Next, click configure my device you will see a diagram that shows you how to use the buttons on the device. Scroll down to step number one, where it says update your Ledger Nano S firmware. It reads, before initializing your device, make sure to update the Ledger Nano S with its latest firmware. Click on the link to the step-by-step -step installation guide. Now, before using the device, we are going to download the Ledger Manager software and update the firmware. Scroll down to the Launch the Ledger Manager and click on Ledger Manager page link. Next, click Get the App and then Install. On the next screen, click Add to Chrome and then Add App. The Ledger Manager app will now show up as a Chrome app. Click on the Ledger Manager icon and a window will pop up that reads, To begin, connect your Ledger wallet. If asked, enter your PIN code to unlock your device. Since this is a brand new Ledger Nano S device, there's no PIN code yet. So in order to update the firmware before use, we will make the Ledger Nano S enter recovery mode. Entering recovery mode will allow us to access the settings from the dashboard to update the firmware before configuring the new device for use. To enter recovery mode, you need to press and hold the right button down before inserting the connected USB cable to the Ledger Nano S. In this video, the right button will always be closest to the swivel hole. Unravel the USB cord that came in the box and connect it to your computer. Now press the right button and hold it down while you plug the device in. The word recovery will display. Next, you may see a warning about your MCU firmware. This is a normal display for outdated firmware. The latest firmware clears up this confusing message. Next, 
press both button downs at the same time to scroll through the different messages until you get to the main screen where Bitcoin is displayed. Now, look at your computer screen. The ledger manager will open and display icons for the different cryptocurrencies it supports. If your firmware is out of date, you will see a notification on the ledger manager that says new firmware available. Click on the notification. The next screen will show details about the firmware update. Read through it and then click install to perform the update. Now look down at your Ledger Nano S. A message will display that says allow Ledger Manager. Press the right button to continue. Next, the display will read processing. Then it will show update firmware, the version number, and an identifier. Check to see that the identifier number on the Ledger screen matches the one displayed on your Ledger Manager app on your computer screen. Then press the right button to continue. The screen will show Update again. Press the right button to continue and your ledger will display processing again. The update may take a few minutes to complete. Once the firmware update is finished, one of two things may happen. If the word welcome along with some instructions that read press both buttons to begin displays, your ledger is ready to go. If your firmware version was 1.3.1 or lower, your Ledger Nano S may display MCU firmware is outdated. If this occurs, simply unplug your Ledger from the computer. And at this time, instead of holding down the right button before plugging it in, press and hold down the left button while plugging it in. This will cause the Ledger to enter bootloader mode. Your Ledger will display bootloader while your computer screen displays restoring MCU. The update and processing messages will display throughout this process on your ledger. As we did with the firmware update, press the right button to continue through the process. It may take several minutes to complete, but once it's finished, you're ready to go. If you encounter issues outside of what's covered in this video, go back to the installation guide link provided by the ledger and read through those instructions. Firmware updates can get squirrely depending on how outdated your ledger is on arrival. Now that your firmware is up to date, it's time to configure your Ledger Nano S. Press the two top buttons on the Ledger S simultaneously. A series of instructions reads, With Ledger Nano S, side buttons are used to interact and control the user interface. Use the left, right buttons to change values and navigate through the multiple choice lists. Press both buttons when you wish to confirm or continue or open an application. To begin configuration, press both buttons. Press the two top buttons on the Ledger Nano S simultaneously. Next, you will see an option to configure the Ledger Nano as a new device. Press the top right button to configure it as a new device. Now, you will be prompted to choose a PIN code. Press the top right button to proceed. On the next screen, you will see eight spaces for an eight-digit PIN code. Although the Ledger will let you choose the length of your PIN code, I highly recommend creating a complicated PIN code that uses all eight spaces to ensure your code is extremely secure and difficult to guess. As I recommend in other crypto setup videos, get a paper notebook and a paper notebook backups to write down all crypto-related passwords for safekeeping. Storing passwords and codes on electronic devices connected to the internet is too risky for investing in this type of new technology. Using the top buttons on your ledger, press the left button to decrease the number and the right button to increase the number. Press both top buttons simultaneously to select a number for your PIN code. Once you've chosen a long, complex eight-digit PIN code, the next step prompts you to confirm your PIN code by entering it a second time. Enter the code again and then write down your long, complex eight-digit PIN code for your Ledger Nano S in your paper notebook. Next, you will be prompted to write down your recovery phrase. Press both top buttons simultaneously, and next you will see a series of words you will need to write down in your paper notebook for safekeeping. The Ledger Nano S comes with recovery seats you can use to write down your recovery phrase as well. It's extremely important to log the words in the same exact order the Ledger Nano S lists them, otherwise your recovery phrase will not work. So in your paper notebook, Write down both the word and the number for your Ledger Nano S recovery phrase. Once you've written down the first word, use the top right button to view the next word. 
You can also use the top left button to view the previous word. Carefully go through the words that make up your Ledger Nano S recovery phrase and write them down in your paper notebook or on the recovery sheets precisely and double and triple check for spelling and word order. Once you've written down the 24th word, next you will be prompted to confirm your recovery phrase. Instructions to select the correct word number will appear. Using the top left and right buttons, scroll through the words until the correct one appears. Then press both top buttons simultaneously to confirm. After confirming a few words, the screen will read processing. Finally, your screen will show that your device is ready. Click both buttons to go to the main menu. You can use the top left and right buttons to scroll through the menu. Get familiar with your device by scrolling through the menu and checking out the setting options that allow you to customize things like the display brightness. Once your device is ready, next you will need to install the Ledger apps on your computer to send and receive funds with your Ledger Nano S. So let's go back to https colon forward slash forward slash start dot ledgerwallet.com and click on the Ledger Nano S icon again. Scroll down and you will see icons to install Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Ripple Wallet. We will install the Bitcoin Wallet first by clicking on the icon. Next, click Add to Chrome and then Allow App. The Bitcoin Wallet app will appear as a Chrome app once installed. Next, let's go back and install the Ethereum Wallet. Click on the Ethereum Wallet icon, then click Add to Chrome and Allow App. Now, the Ethereum Wallet app will appear as a Chrome app. Finally, let's go back and install the Ripple Wallet. Click on the icon, then get the app and download. This wallet install is a little more involved. Once the install file is downloaded, open it and proceed with the installation. Great, now you have the three core apps you need to manage cryptocurrency supported by your Ledger Wallet. Let's open them and get familiar with using the apps. First, let's open the Bitcoin wallet. You'll be prompted to connect and unlock your Ledger wallet by entering your PIN. Once your PIN is confirmed, locate Bitcoin on your dashboard and press both buttons simultaneously to access the Bitcoin wallet app. On your computer screen, you'll be prompted to choose which Bitcoin chain you want to use, Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash. You can store both Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash with the Ledger Nano S. For this video, we are going to look at the Bitcoin chain. Next, you need to choose an address type, legacy or SegWit. If you do not have a SegWit address yet, I recommend creating one and migrating your funds from your legacy address. That way you can benefit from the lower fees and faster transaction times. If you would like to learn more about the differences between legacy and SegWit addresses, Click on the link here for more information. So let's go ahead and choose SegWit in this video. You will be brought to the Ledger Bitcoin Wallet dashboard. From here, you can click on your account, view your balances, and there are also a couple of options for sending and receiving funds. Here is the Send option menu. You can choose the amount, paste the recipient's Bitcoin wallet address here, Choose which account to withdraw the funds from, and choose which type of transaction fees you would like to incur. In the bottom left, you can click on the camera icon to use your laptop camera to scan a QR code for the recipient address instead of copying it manually into the field above. Now, here's the Receive option menu. Choose to display your Bitcoin address on the Ledger Nano S for your review. Your Ledger Nano S will display your Bitcoin address for receiving funds. On your computer screen, you will see the address and corresponding QR code for receiving funds. In the bottom right hand corner, there are options to email or print your wallet information for receiving funds. Remember, anyone with your public Bitcoin address can send you funds, but they cannot withdraw funds. So you can give this address to anyone and the only thing they can do is send you funds. 
So if you have Bitcoin on an exchange or somewhere else, this is the address you would use to send the Bitcoin to your Ledger Nano S for safekeeping. When you want to exchange the Bitcoin back to fiat like US dollar, you would need to use the send function on this wallet app to transfer the money to a Bitcoin address on an exchange like Coinbase or GDAX that trades Bitcoin for fiat. If you are holding Bitcoin long term and you aren't an active trader, I highly recommend keeping your Bitcoin on a cold storage wallet like the Ledger Nano S. Back to the wallet app. Click on the settings and get familiar with the interface. In the settings menu, you can customize things like the display, exchange rate, units, and language preferences. Next, let's look at the Ethereum Ledger Wallet app. Open the app on your computer. To switch to another cryptocurrency from Bitcoin on your Ledger Nano S, press the right button twice until you see Quit App. Then press both buttons simultaneously to get back to the dashboard. Next, navigate to the Ethereum icon and press both buttons simultaneously. The Ethereum Wallet app on your computer screen will open. On the dashboard, you will see your Ether balance and any previous transactions. At the top, you can choose the Send or Receive icons to initiate a transaction, which is similar to the Bitcoin Wallet app. Just like Bitcoin, anyone with your Ethereum public address can send you money, but they cannot withdraw money. Again, you can send your address to receive Ether via email, or you can print your address as well. Next, let's check out the Ripple Wallet. Open the Ripple Wallet on your computer. Navigate to your dashboard on your Ledger Nano S by pressing the right button twice until you see Quit App, and then press both buttons simultaneously. You will notice that your Ledger Nano S comes with Bitcoin and Ethereum pre-installed. To open the Ripple Wallet app on your computer, we need to install Ripple on your Ledger Nano S. In order to receive other types of cryptocurrency that the Ledger Nano S supports, like Ripple, you need to open your Ledger Manager app on your computer again. Once the Ledger Manager opens, you will see a list of cryptocurrencies. Scroll down and click on the download arrow icon next to Ripple. When Ripple has successfully installed, unplug your Nano and then plug it back in. Unlock your device, then navigate to the Ripple icon on your Ledger Nano S. Press both buttons simultaneously and go back to the Ripple wallet on your computer. Now the Ripple wallet app will open. The dashboard and send and receive functions are similar to the Ethereum wallet app we went over previously. If you go to https colon forward slash forward slash ledgerwallet.com forward slash cryptocurrencies, you will be brought to a list of the cryptocurrencies Ledger Nano S supports. This list will also show you which software wallets are compatible with each currency. All of the cryptocurrencies that show Ledger Wallet under the Compatible Wallet column can be accessed using your Bitcoin Wallet app I walked you through earlier. So as of the date of this video, in May 2018, using the Ledger Bitcoin Wallet app, you will be able to store, send, and receive Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Gold, Litecoin, Dogecoin, Zcash, Dash, Stratus, Komodo, Vertcoin, Viacoin, Stealthcoin, Hcash, Digibyte, Qtum, PIVX, and POSW. Here's an example of how to access each of those coins using the Ledger Bitcoin Wallet app. Follow these same steps for all of the cryptocurrencies that show Ledger Wallet under the Compatible Wallet column on the ledgerwallet.com forward slash cryptocurrencies page. In this example, we will install and access Litecoin and PIVX. Open the Ledger Manager app on your computer and unlock your Ledger Nano S. Click on the download icon next to the Litecoin. Once it's installed, open the Ledger Bitcoin Wallet app. Navigate to the new Litecoin icon on your Ledger Nano S and press both buttons simultaneously. Choose your address type and then you will see your Litecoin balance. And that's it. You're ready to handle Litecoin. Now we're going to repeat the same steps for PIVX. Go to your Ledger Manager app on your computer. Click the download icon next to PIVX. Once the download is complete, open your Bitcoin Wallet app. Navigate to the new PIVX icon on your Ledger Nano S. 
and press both buttons simultaneously. When the wallet opens, it shows your PIVX balance and accounts. Now, back to the Ledger cryptocurrency list. You will see that Ethereum and Ethereum Classic are supported by the Ledger Ethereum wallet we went over in this video. Perform the same steps we did for Litecoin and PIVX for Ethereum Classic. However, instead of opening the Ledger Bitcoin wallet, open the Ledger Ethereum wallet on your computer, and you can store, send, and receive Ethereum Classic with your Ledger Nano S. There are a few cryptocurrencies that require different software applications to interface with the Ledger Nano S. Looking back at the Ledger's crypto list, you can see that under the Compatible Wallets column for NEO, you need to use a NEO wallet to store, send, and receive NEO with your Ledger Nano S. Click on the NEO wallet link, and you'll see several different NEO software wallets to choose from. You can select one to download and follow the wallet steps for interfacing with the Ledger Nano S. Remember, you would need to download the NEO app onto your Ledger Nano S using the Ledger Manager. Then navigate to the NEO icon on your Ledger Nano S and press both buttons while the NEO software wallet is open. It's very similar to the processes we just went over earlier, just with a different software wallet. Next, if you have ARC, you would need to download the ARC desktop app. This link takes you to GitHub, which is where a lot of software is stored and shared. Choose your computer's operating system, whether it's Linux, Mac, or Windows, and download the corresponding ARC desktop app. Then install the ARC app to your Ledger Nano S using the Ledger Manager, and have the ARC selected when you open the ARC desktop app. If you select Stellar, they have their own connection process with the Ledger Nano S you can follow. For Ubic, click on the link, and in the top right corner, they have a link to the process of using your Ledger Nano S as well. And finally, for Expanse, use My Ether Wallet, which is commonly referred to as MEW, M-E-W. It also has its own process for connecting with your Ledger Nano S. I highly recommend setting up a MyEther wallet using a hardware device. Not only is it one of the best ways to access MyEther wallet, it will also allow you to store, send, and receive a litany of other cryptocurrencies. Any token built on the Ethereum network can be stored, sent, and received using MyEther wallet. Set up a MyEther wallet using your Ledger Nano S. Go through the setup process by choosing Ledger, Connect the device, unlock the device, choose a path. In this video, we're going to choose the default selection. And finally, choose a wallet address. Then click Unlock Wallet. The top right corner displays your account address. This address can be used to receive Ethereum and any other token built on the Ethereum network. If you scroll down to Token Balances and click Show All Tokens, you will see a long list of the cryptocurrencies my Ether wallet supports. It's an extremely long and expansive list. Click on any of the tokens in this list to view your token balance. Using my Ether wallet, you can store, send, and receive a myriad of cryptocurrencies. Great, now you are ready to start using your Ledger Nano S for storing, sending, and receiving a wide variety of cryptocurrencies safely and securely. Now, let's look at the Trezor One hardware wallet. First, visit https colon forward slash forward slash treasure.io. Then double and triple check the URL to ensure it's the correct one, or you can safely access the Treasure Wallet website by using the link in this description below. So click on the link in this description below, and on the Treasure Wallet homepage, click Get Your Treasure. In this tutorial, we will cover the Treasure One. You can choose a black or white device. And as usual, I recommend buying at least two just in case one goes missing, so you have a backup device and don't have to wait for a new one to ship. Sometimes these cryptocurrency wallets are on back order, so you don't want to lose access to your funds for several months while you wait for another device to reach you. Next, click Add to Cart and then proceed to checkout. Confirm the country they are shipping your order to and choose the quantity. Then click Continue. Enter your billing and delivery address and then choose a payment method. Note you may pay with a credit card or with Bitcoin. Once everything is filled out, you can place your order. 
So let's unbox the Trezor One. Here's the box the Trezor One comes in. Ensure that the stickers across the opening are intact. Otherwise, it could be an indication that the device has been tampered with. In the box, there are some stickers. And here's the device. It comes with a USB cord, a lanyard, recovery seed sheets, and a manual. Now let's set up your Trezor One device. First, visit https colon forward slash forward slash treasure.io forward slash start. And you will reach a welcome screen that prompts you to choose your device. This tutorial covers the Trezor One, so click the Trezor One. Next, you will need to select your computer's operating system, whether it's Mac, Windows, or Linux, to download the correct software package. Choose the correct OS and click the download button. Leave your browser open on this page. Once the download is complete, open the package and you will see an introduction screen. Click the confirm button to begin the installation process. Click through the rest of the buttons to continue through the installation process. Once the installation is successful, click close. Now, go back to your browser and click on the refresh page. Great. Now you're able to use your Trezor software interface. Next, it's time to install the corresponding firmware on your Trezor hardware device. Plug your Trezor into your computer using the USB cord provided in the package. Your device screen will show a welcome message. On your computer, click on the Install Firmware button to proceed. Your Trezor will display progress bars during the installation. Watch your computer screen and the screen on your Trezor while it carefully for instructions. Disconnect your Trezor when prompted on your Trezor screen and then reconnect it when prompted on your computer screen. When the firmware installation is complete, you will see an option on your computer screen to create a new wallet or recover another Trezor wallet. In this tutorial, we are setting up a brand new Trezor One wallet for the first time. So choose Create a New Wallet by clicking on the Create New button. Great, now your Trezor wallet is ready to continue with the setup. You will see a screen with some features. Read through these by clicking on the arrows. Make sure you verify the address authenticity on your Trezor by clicking on the button next to your address to double check it on the device display. Click on Show Full Address and ensure it matches the address displayed on your device perfectly. Next, Trezor will prompt you to set up and enable two-factor authentication on your Trezor device. When you're finished, click Continue to the wallet. You will be brought back to the main dashboard. In the top left-hand corner, you will see a drop-down with a list of supported cryptocurrencies you can store on your Trezor device. At the top, you will see a progress bar. It should read 10%. The next thing you need to do is click Create a Backup to proceed. Read the next screen very carefully before creating a backup. You need to know the following. Your recovery seed is the backup key to all cryptocurrencies and applications. Your recovery seed can only be displayed once. Never make a digital copy of your recovery seed and never upload it online. Keep your recovery seed in a safe place. Trezor cannot be held liable for financial losses incurred through improper care of sensitive information. Some things to avoid include the following. Do not take a photo of your recovery seed. Do not write it into a computer. Do not save it into your cloud storage. Never upload it to the internet. Once you understand how to handle your seed, click on the I understand and agree checkbox, and then click continue. Next, on your Trezor device, you will see a unique combination of 24 words which allow you to recover your accounts in case you lose your device. The order of the words is very important. Please write down all these words carefully. Double check the spelling and then click the right button under the Trezor screen to display the next word. Using the recovery seed cards provided in your Trezor package, use a pen to carefully write down each word as they are displayed one by one on your Trezor device. Repeat this process for all 24 words until the recovery seed card is full. Make sure you write them down in the correct order as well. Otherwise, you will not be able to recover your device if you needed to in the future. Once you've written down and double-checked the 24th word, 
you will be prompted to go through the word list one final time to triple check it for accuracy. Go through the word list once more to ensure your recovery seed card is accurate. When finished, you have successfully backed up your device. Next, click Continue. Now it's time to name your device. Trezor encourages you to name your device for security reasons. By customizing the device name, you can be sure that the Trezor in your hands is indeed yours. It may also help you in distinguishing between different Trezor devices. So click the Continue button and personalize your device with a custom name up to 16 characters in length. Type in a name and click Confirm to Continue. Then look at your Trezor device and confirm there as well. Next, click Continue and then enter a strong pin to protect your device from unauthorized access. The number layout will be displayed on your Trezor device. The maximum amount of numbers you can choose is nine. I highly recommend using all nine numbers and choosing a set of numbers until the bottom right hand corner of the display reads perfect, impossible to guess. That way your device's pin is as secure as possible. Once your pin is set, click continue. And you can choose to follow Trezor on social media for updates and announcements. Then click continue again. Awesome, now your Trezor is ready to go. Click finish. The interface for storage, sending, and receiving currency is easy to navigate. On the dashboard, you will see your device basics, including the label, pin protection, and balance. In the home screen section, you can customize the default display on your Trezor. You can choose from the Trezor gallery or upload your own image. The advanced menu allows you to enable passphrase encryption as an additional layer of security, as well as disable your pin, which I do not recommend you ever do. You can also check your recovery seed or wipe the device here. Currently, we are viewing the Bitcoin wallet. You can view your account here. Once you fund the account, you can create more Bitcoin addresses to receive funds. Under your account, you can view the transactions as well as send and receive funds. In send, you can scan an address using your laptop camera. You can also choose your transaction fee type. Under receive, Click the show full address and you can view and verify the address on your Trezor display. Clicking here, you can switch between other cryptocurrencies that Trezor One supports. Let's switch to Bitcoin Cash. A warning message will let you know that you are switching to another type of cryptocurrency. You can only send and receive Bitcoin Cash beyond this point. Click confirm once you've read the warning. It's extremely important to remember when dealing with cryptocurrency that certain addresses only correspond with certain types of currency. This means you can only send Bitcoin to a Bitcoin address and only receive Bitcoin from a Bitcoin address. When switching to Bitcoin Cash, you can only send and receive Bitcoin Cash. Otherwise, you risk losing your funds. On the Trezor One app, you can switch seamlessly between Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Gold, Dash, Litecoin, and Zcash using this drop-down menu alone. However, when you choose Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, or NEM, another software application will be required to interface with your Trezor for storing, sending, and receiving those currencies. Specifically, Ethereum and Ethereum Classic will require use of My Ether Wallet, and NEM will require its own designated software app. Again, I highly recommend setting up a My Ether wallet using a hardware device like Ledger or Trezor. Go through the setup process by choosing Trezor, connect the device, unlock the device, choose a path. In this video, we're going to choose the default selection. And finally, choose a wallet address. Then click Unlock Wallet. The top right hand corner displays your account address. Again, this address can be used to receive Ethereum and any other token built on the Ethereum network like Ethereum Classic. If you scroll down to token balances and click on show all tokens, you will see a long list of cryptocurrencies my Ether wallet supports. Again, it's extremely long and expansive. You can receive any of these tokens directly to your My Ether wallet using your account address in the top right hand corner. Click on any of these tokens in the list to view your token balance. Using My Ether Wallet, you can store, send, and receive a myriad of cryptocurrencies. Great, now you are ready to store, send, and receive cryptocurrencies using the Trezor One. 
Both the Ledger Nano S and Trezor One are great cryptocurrency hardware wallets. Currently, the Trezor One has a simpler interface, while the Ledger Nano S supports more types of cryptocurrencies in a more sophisticated way by checking the integrity of the device each time it's powered on. For your reference, here are the two different devices side by side. They are very similar in size, and it's up to you to determine the device that will serve your needs. It's extremely important to keep your hardware wallets up to date with the latest firmware to ensure they remain safe and secure. These two hardware wallets support a lot of the main cryptocurrencies currently available on the market. However, there are many other types of cryptocurrencies that only are supported by hot wallets, like desktop or mobile software. So what other questions do you guys have about secure cryptocurrency wallets that I did not cover in this video? What other cryptocurrency wallets would you like to have a tutorial on? Thanks for your comments and feedback, and thanks for watching.